All right, I've been a bit quiet on this YouTube account. I thought I'd be a bit more consistent, but hey, life is busy. I'm here now though, and it is peak week number one for my bodybuilding season of 2023 after a long hiatus. And I'm here in Newcastle in New South Wales, in Australia, obviously. And this, so I had to fly here. And this first show is one that I've decided to enter early. I was not planning on doing it. I wasn't prepping for it based on my timeline. But I noticed that there was a show coming up and I thought I would probably be ready for it. And it would allow me to qualify for nationals straight away. So I could look at doing some other bodybuilding competitions in between and not put so much pressure on future comps to qualify. So this is the first competition which qualifies me for the very last potential competition of my season. Now one of the um, comps that I'm entering halfway through or towards the back end of this season is actually one where if you win your division, you cannot actually compete with other federations anymore. So I might not make it to nationals because if I do win my division, then that would be totally fine. I would accept the pro card if I was to be that lucky. And um, either way, this first show gets me on stage straight away. I'm doing two divisions. I'm doing one which is 30 plus bodybuilders, so 30 years old and, and 30 years plus basically. And uh, the other one is open men's. My goal is to win an overall title with the ICN or an overall title in general basically in this season. That's my goal. And like I said, this comp's an early one. And the other guys that, have, that are dieting for this one probably are putting all their effort into this competition, whereas I've kind of just advanced myself and pushed myself a bit quicker or a bit harder to get here. So hopefully I do really well. I'm very pretty happy with how I'm looking right now and my presentation and stuff. Tomorrow I put tan on and practice posing. I've been here for a couple of days now and it's just been relaxing, trying to just, you know, kick my feet up, do a little bit of posing practice, and also um, some light circuit training as well. But what I wanted to show you guys is all the food that I have bought for tomorrow. And then, so tomorrow's the last day before. Tomorrow will be one day out, and then I've got the comp day as well. So I've got the food here that I've got basically, I guess, for peak week, for the, for the last day and for show day. And I thought maybe I'll go through some of it and just explain to you guys why I have these suits. Now, in addition to that, my peak week for this competition is a little bit different to past ones. Uh, what I've done is I started my peak week 14 days out, and the first seven days of that was just literally protein the same, fats the same, hydration the same, and just increasing my carbohydrates by 20 grams each day. I also maintained a high step count, and everything in my training was on point. That gave my body uh, the ability, ability to digest and assimilate carbohydrates at a better rate, basically, because it's more accustomed to having more food coming in. Uh, it also gave me a bit more energy in, the, in that week of training and gave me a bit of a buffer to fill out a bit more. So that was fantastic. And I actually kept losing weight in that phase right up until the seventh day. Um, my weight was going down by a small amount or maintaining. And that actually got me up to close to my maintenance calories. And then, for the, that was week number one. And then week number two, I could have just keep, kept going up 20 grams every day right up until the show. That was my initial uh, consideration, which is called a, li a linear progressive load. And you're just adding more carbohydrates and could keep going up as you look. But I was kind of worried that I would come into the show flat, like not really giving myself an opportunity to carb up correctly or sufficiently. Even though it's my first show, I thought maybe it's probably better to just bump up a little bit more and then taper back. So what I've done this week is done a bit more of a mid-load where midweek I hit my highest amount of carbohydrates, around 515 grams of carbs. The day before that was 400. The day before that was obviously like uh, 380. The day before that was 360 because I was going up at 20 grams. Uh, so I got up to 400 in the 20 gram increments and then I pushed up to 515 or so for one day and then I backed off to 480 or 450 and then down and I've been tapering down now. Don't have my scale here with me unfortunately. I couldn't travel with it so don't know what my weight is doing. I really wish I did but that's fine. Um, so yeah I've been tapering down. Yesterday was my lowest weight, my lowest calories and um, today I've gone back up a little bit and tomorrow will more than likely be back up again. So I've increased my intake of calories or carbohydrates progressively 
Then I had a sharp push up and now I'm doing a taper down and I've tightened up. I look leaner today, just morning, which is great. Also flat though. And then I'm gonna wake up tomorrow, see how I look. If I look flat like I think I will, tomorrow will be a higher day. 450 grams of carbohydrates. Um, and that's the plan. That's kind of how peak week has gone. My body, this is unique to me, I believe. And I think it's somewhat genetics. And I've had a conversation with my family about this and they tested some things for me and it turned out to be pretty on the money of what I expected. My genetics are quite interesting where my body doesn't metabolize electrolytes very well or doesn't handle a high amount of salt or sodium in general. Anytime I have a lot of sodium, I will just retain, I'll just puff up, I'll retain fluid. If I go on holidays and I just eat out and like eat at buffets and stuff, I just blow up. Not really my face, just my whole body just blows up. It's like, what is going on here? And so that's obviously an electrolyte imbalance. So what I tend to do often, and I get my clients to do this often as well, is to increase potassium to offset the sodium and try to excrete more sodium and improve that balance. So oftentimes I'll have coconut water, or I'll have spinach or tin tomatoes, bananas, things like that to increase my potassium intake to manage that. And I've been trying to push for more potassium, less sodium in general. That way when I do have sodium, it's purposeful. It gets me a pump. And I know that later on I'm gonna look worse for it, but later on doesn't matter. As long as I have it before my pump up, I should be good to go. So that's an individual thing. I can literally, I'm, I'm so happy that I figured that out, but I can literally have the same macros, but then adjust the sodium amount, like salt my foods, have lots of water as well or whatever. And every time I've tried it, five days, six days, seven days later, I'm still retaining fluid. My body just doesn't seem to adapt or like a high amount of salt. So even today, I woke up, I had a lot of sodium early in the day, I was gonna go do a pump workout, and then I pushed the workout back and I noticed my body getting smoother and smoother across the day. My potassium intake was quite low early in the day. And um, that was not ideal. I did not look good halfway through today. So then I bumped up my potassium a lot. I had some diced tomatoes with some tuna and some um, mashed potato and spinach. So a lot of potassium there. And drank some water and I was going to the bathroom pretty quickly just to urinate, get, getting rid of all the sodium. And now I look tighter again. So that's quite kind of interesting. It's kind of unique and maybe some people might relate to that. Um, but I've, I've seen a lot of research around people who are salt sensitive and it can be genetics, it can be um, hereditary, and um, it can be based on the origin of where you were born or like your background, stuff like that. So it's kind of interesting. Anyways, with that said, tomorrow, I have specifically calculated my macros, but also the amount of potassium and sodium that I'm having across the day. And every single meal has a two to one ratio of potassium to sodium. So double the amount of potassium for each meal. That way I'm gonna ensure that my fluid balance is on point. And, cause it's, it's kind of interesting. If you have a lot of sodium, low potassium, you can retain fluid. If you have a lot of potassium and not much sodium, you can look very, very flat and look very depleted cause you're excreting more sodium. And you can be vascular, but then your abs don't pop because you're just flat, your muscles are flat. So there's a lot to it, it's very intricate. Unfortunately for me, that's kind of what the cards have been dealt with and it's something I've actually realized over many years of dieting and competing and doing photo shoots. Anytime I load up on salt, thinking I'm gonna get vascular, I actually end up just looking smooth and puffy and it's super frustrating. So anyways, that's me. So tomorrow, I'm going to have, uh, like I said, very similar meals across the day, lots of uh, high potassium, high carbohydrates, very low fat, and uh, moderate protein, just pretty much protein based on um, my maintenance right now. So some of the foods I've got here are very straightforward, but what I've got here is coconut water. So that's obviously gonna be my source of a very strong source of potassium. And then this is another great source of potassium right there. Got the bananas for that as well, and the potatoes. So they're my high potassium foods. The rice cakes are gonna be with Nutella and with jam. Those foods actually contain little to no electrolytes whatsoever, so they're not gonna really affect me. They're like neutral foods, so they're a good choice. For my protein, I'm gonna stick with tuna just because um, I'm not home, I can't really cook. Well, I could, but it's just annoying to have to cook, so I'm just gonna go with tuna. 
So my meals will be like tuna based basically if I need to get my protein in, well, when I get my protein in, as well as protein powder. And then, how do I explain this? So basically what I've got is some complete meals. And before I get on stage, I'm going to have Powerade, which is gonna be a good amount of sodium. Actually, it's got more potassium than sodium. Gatorade's better, so I'm gonna add some salt to this. Uh, I've got caffeine tablets, which are gonna give me some energy. Having some caffeine, um, actually, yeah, having caffeine with meals can help to digest carbohydrates better, uptake nutrients better. So small amount, 50 milligrams or so, or I can have a heavy dose of caffeine right before I get on stage and pump up. That might be a good option as well. So that's gonna be, um, while I'm pumping up, I've got a Snickers bar, because I've got two divisions. So on my second division is when I'll have the Snickers bar and the Powerade or the electrolyte drink. And I've also got rice crackers as well, which is gonna be part of my my main meal before I get on stage. So two hours before I get on stage is when you wanna have a high sodium meal, a uh, moderate fat and a low protein and get some hydration in there. So that meal for me is going to be these rice crackers, probably a half a scoop of protein powder. The Snickers, we'll get the fats in there and this guy right here, that's what I'm planning on. I've got it all written out already on my phone and stuff, but um, yeah. And then in addition, I bought these as a just in case. Can't get a pump? Jelly beans is going to be the answer. Generally, if you can't get a pump, you need to have more hydration and more sodium. Like I said, my body doesn't like salt too much, so I've got to be really mindful of that. Um, and that's pretty much it for peak week and my update with my food. So I am very well prepared, which is great. Tomorrow I do tan. Um, don't know if I'll upload this video straight up as it is, or if I'll just wait till I got my tan on and do some posing practice and stuff. I don't know, maybe I'll just do that as a separate video. We'll see how we go. Uh, but yeah, tomorrow's a tanning day, a base coat tan. I've got to shave my whole body, exfoliate, do all that kind of stuff. And then show day is on Sunday. So today's Friday, so two days away. And I'll do the top coat in the morning on the Sunday. And then I got on stage at 12.20, so midday, and 1.40 in the afternoon. The 141 is the overalls, it's the most important one, it's the opens one, and that's the one that I really want to win, which will then give me the overall award. And there will be some great physiques on that stage, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna win, but I'm doing everything I can to learn my body and to ensure that I bring the best physique to the stage because I'm getting on stage again in two weeks from now, and then a week after that, and potentially two weeks after that as well. So I've got a lot to look forward to, and that's just my little update on Peak Week. I hope you guys found it you know, informative. If you have any questions, leave some comments below. Um, tomorrow is going to be basically waking up, having a protein shake, having uh, an electrolyte mixed drink, which is a one-to-one -one ratio of potassium and sodium. And that is called Staminade. And I'm gonna have some rice crackers with peanut butter and banana on top. And then some other rice crackers with peanut butter, sorry, with Nutella and banana on top. My second meal will be a proper meal which is going to be the tuna, rice, potato, diced tomatoes, spinach, and that's it, I think. And so as you can tell, a lot of potassium there, a lot of carbohydrates as well. And then I'm gonna run that same meal again um, as my third meal of the day. And then the fourth one is going to be, I believe, hmm, I wrote it down. Like I said, I wrote it down. What is it gonna be? I think it's just gonna be uh, a protein shake and rice crackers, I think. Not too sure about that one. But very, very simple foods, very low fiber foods for the most part. Like I said, it's, it's, um, it's an electrolyte consideration. It's a carbohydrate focus and it's lower fats. Um, and tomorrow, overall, my sodium intake will be around 2,500 milligrams and my potassium intake will be close to 6,000 milligrams. So five and a half to 6,000 milligrams, which is quite the ratio. And I think that's what my body needs. So on show day, my foods will be very much the same as what I've got here, um, just organized in a different way. I'll have three meals before I get on stage the first time, and then I'll have that quick little snack in between um, classes. So that's it for me. That's my peak week update. No cutting water, uh, no cutting out sodium, just organizing it in a way that suits my body. Um, there's no, nothing that I can't really have besides 
like the only thing that would be unnecessary would be high fat. High fiber would not be good, so no vegetables at this point in time besides potato. Uh, you know, no fibrous vegetables. And no pre-workout, just in case, you know, the stimulants and stuff are not always the best when you get drug tested. And fingers crossed I get drug tested because every season I get drug tested and to me it's like a claim to fame, like, yeah, um, you know, if, if I, it's, it's weird. If I don't get drug tested, I'm kind of offended. Like, what? You don't think I look like I, I lift? Um, but when I picked up all this stuff, the guy, I told the guy that I was doing a bodybuilding competition and he's like, man, yeah, you're huge. So that was nice. That was nice. Uh, that's my video for today and um, I'll speak to you guys soon.